Thanks for taking a break with us. I'm Mark. This is our known. During today's break, we'll be discussing one of our known's favorite topics of fixed versus floating point processing and how to choose the right DSP for your application. But we begin with the discussion on device longevity, which is often a key consideration when choosing a processor. Arnon, what can you tell us about the important topic of TI device longevity? 24, 7, 10. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 10 years. Uh, and I know that's very important for a lot of the application spaces we go in, particularly uh, industrial uh, type applications. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, really what we're saying is that they're absolutely reliable. We design for 100,000 power on hours. Um, we're going out into systems, and better markets are oftentimes out in inaccessible areas. Um, they want to, you know, put that out there once and not worry about it. So 24-7-10 is, you know, really critical in everything that we do in our design. Yeah, and it's sold into, like, automotive places, sold into uh, yeah. mission Factories, critical. the base stations right. that we talk about, the mission critical applications, you know, they, they, they just really, really need that longevity. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the other aspect of longevity, I think, when, when customers ask sometimes, is just uh, continuity of supply, right? How long can they get the device? How long will TI yeah, keep I mean, making it? Yeah, you know, it? they're expecting it to work for 10 years at least, and oftentimes yeah. these systems are out in the field for 15 or 20 years. You know, we still supply devices for systems that are 15, 20 years old, and not many suppliers will do that. They, they'll end of life products, um, you know, make it hard to support, you know, long term. We don't do that. Yeah, and I think we've mentioned a couple times how, how long we've been at TI, and we're still selling the same devices that we were selling, you know, at the beginning of our careers, which yep. is As long as there's impressive. a market for it, we'll keep building it. Yep. Uh, with TI's introduction of the C66 DSP core, and Mark, I know this is one of your favorite topics, TI combined the floating point and fixed point architectures, resulting in the world's fastest floating point DSP. So Mark, viewers may not understand why floating point is so important, uh, so what can you tell us about that? You know, this is funny that this comes to, to me, this goes back to conversations we used to have 20 years ago about fixed versus floating point uh, and, and which to use. And I guess it be, because historically, right, fixed point processing uh, was a lower power uh, and, and it was easier smaller. To do. Yeah, and, and it ran at a higher speed, and, and floating point was was bigger and slower. And so there was, uh, you know, but there are end equipment spaces that require floating point for the for its wider dynamic range, the way it expresses uh, numbers, right? And so there's areas, uh, military is a big one, professional audio. There's several places where they yep. argue need the precision. And yeah, the, I mean, the back in the day, range. fixed point was easier to implement. Floating point meant more power, more expensive. You know, with C66, we fixed that. It was the same. We ran at a gigahertz, and you know, this is near and dear to my heart because. Um, I remember having to take a fixed point processor and implement Here a matrix go. inversion, yeah. which is high dynamic range, yeah. and I had to get this giant book called Numerical Here Recipes in C, which is like the size yeah. of a, of a Big giant book. dictionary. It was like the worst four months of my engineering career. That was horrible. Yeah, now, well, I've, I been, I've been hearing this story for again. longer than yes. four months, and I thought with <laughs> our 6.6 XDSP core, we were done with that topic, so, right? You have know, fixed, you have floating, C, you got book. it both. Yes. Don't need to hear that story it's anymore. It's very important, though. Never need to hear it. People need to know. <laughs> Never need to hear a story again. To know. All right. Well, TI has such a wide selection of DSP products, it's sometimes difficult for customers going to the website to decide which products they should be looking at. So, Arnon, what advice do you have for customers to quickly figure out which DSP is best for their application? Um, well, my best advice is go to the website, and we have a couple different ways. We slice it by application or by performance. So, if you, if, if you know kind of the performance that you need, you can go to the product side of our tree. And you can, you, know, you can look for single core, if you're looking for low power, if you're looking for more performance, you can go into multi-core and you get ARMS and DSPs together if you're looking to integrate it SOC. Yeah. If you're looking more application space, we have a really good application website and you can find devices through that. Yeah, so you could look at machine vision, mission critical, those type of application yep, spaces. Industrial. When you, when you talk about the segments, I think you talk about dividing them, but also, uh, j you know, just to give people a little insight into the product families, when you're talking like low power, like half a watt and under, right, there's a C5000 DSP family, yep, yep. so you're looking in there is good. If you go to like the uh, 500 milliwatts to one watt range, there's the OMAP L138. It, yeah, which a great is ARM processor. plus DSP, or if you just want the DSP, it's C674. Yeah, and then you go into um, single and, and dual core, like um, high end DSPs, the C666 processors. The fastest floating point DSP in the world. And fixed point. And then you have, uh, and then when you get into the, the multi-core heterogeneous systems, they have ARM and DSP, right? That's kind of the keystone multi-core DSP segment. So um, if you break down those four lines, those are the four general uh, families that, and then you can obviously sort within each of those. There's a, a parametric tool that allows you to pick your different uh, mixes that you need to see and yeah, help and you. We're actually spending a lot of time on the website, uh, you know, trying to make it more friendly, more easy to use, easier to find things. And so definitely, um, you know, people out there, if you go to the website, you can't find what you need, please let us know. We're, we're looking to improve it every day. Yeah, this guy's kind of responsible for that, so he'll, he'll be very <laughs> so responsive. Anything you put me. on the website, send, send it to him. He'll look at it. All right, let's move to the wrap-up. Let's do it. All right, back to movies. Yes. Uh, what's your favorite movie this year with a technical... Reference. You know, um, actually, I'm going to pick a movie I haven't seen yet, uh, and it's probably been out for a while, but I really want to see it, called uh, Ex Machina. 
Looks really cool story on AI. Maybe a little creepy, but looks pretty good. Yeah, I just hope it's not as scary as The Shining. Yeah, it's, it's too creepy. Yeah. My, my wife won't see it with yeah. me, actually. So, actually, uh, I was out the other night with my wife, and she tried to describe my job to some friends of ours, and the description <laughs> wasn't even remotely close to what I do. So, how does your wife describe your job? Uh, she doesn't. I think she describes it as the place that I go where she gets peace and quiet. <laughs> I think that's how it is. <laughs> and when you're here, none of us get peace and yeah, quiet. Exactly. All right, so uh, Mark, what's the next trade show you'll be at? Oh, uh, good one. Uh, this is, I assume, so people can avoid going to that show. No, I know um, that people will want to get to know you. So I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell people where I should be so they can avoid it. But uh, the next one I probably know is I'll be at the next um, Embedded Vision Alliance uh, member summit that comes up. They do one every uh, quarterly. Embedded, Embedded Vision Alliance, uh, great Th Great site. site. Yeah, yeah. Check, check out their website to learn about Embedded Vision. How about you? Uh, no, I'm just sitting here working on the website. <laughs> All right. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for taking a break with us. Tweet us your questions and comments or anything to do with the website. Uh, use the hashtag DSP Break, and we'll address them in future videos. Um, as always, don't forget to uh, follow us on Twitter. Check out ti.com slash dreamdsp for all the latest info and material on TI DSPs. And to help you remember DSPs, uh, distracting spousal portrayals. <laughs>